So that's four missions. And the most important is Islamization, because the rest everybody can do. Everybody is doing integration, everybody is doing internationalization, everybody is doing comprehensive, everybody wants to be want to be excellent. But you know, excellence without the soul is another problem. And Islamization is what makes all the difference. And our university, of course, is based on that. But as Prof. Asman uh, said this morning, that we have still a long way to go. And we're not claiming to have all the answers, but we're trying, inshallah. And we hope that uh, with the changing situation in the world today, that, um, that this kind of discourse, this kind of mission will be better appreciated uh, in the coming years ahead. And particularly now, we are really gripped with this worldwide crisis. Of course, the focus is on Europe for two reasons, the European football and also the uh, Euro crisis. Um, and I think you have missed last night's match between Germany and Italy. And surprisingly, Italy won. And that's not my team. My team is Germany. Wow. <laughs> so, I don't know what your team is. Maybe Spain. Anyway, so, but, but putting aside uh, the Euro um, games, it is the European crisis which is really gripping the world. And last night, uh, I watched the BBC and I was struck by the statements by what they're saying now that the banking crisis is really what I have been saying also this is <laughs> and, and exactly the same systemic crisis it's not just you know parts uh, here and there need to, uh, in disrepair the whole system needs to be overhauled and this is systemic crisis so uh, and this is not just economics, not just economics, uh, politics as well. And of course, we see now, alhamdulillah, changes in the Middle East, again, systemic crisis, the need for a complete overhaul. And hence, the appeal to alternative paradigm uh, that uh, and we believe, uh, and this small group, min humul mukhlasi, you know, uh, believe that, um, that uh, there is, uh, this is the time for, for presenting the, the alternative paradigm. And of course, your focus is on economics, business management. That's great, because this is uh, the, uh, very important. This is the backbone, you might say, of, of uh, the, uh, parent, uh, the current civilization. And um, the backbone is now cancerous, and you need to replace it. And, um, uh, even when you talk about the, uh, the movement of uh, Islamization of human knowledge, uh, it precedes what uh, have been sort of uh, popularized by Professor Nakib al Abbas and also uh, Ismail al Faruqi and many others, Triple IT. Uh, I believe uh, this discourse in the 20th century is a response, uh, is a post colonial response to the dominance of Western civilization uh, which is uh, which was at that time seen as really um, hegemonic and having a very um, bad uh, influence upon the minds of the Muslim professionals and so on but the call for uh, looking at economics from Islamic perspective was made very very early 30s 40s 50s um, until of course uh, early 20th century, I mean the second part of the 20th century. Um, but in my, in my paper, my contention is that uh, the call for Islamization of human knowledge goes all the way back to, you know, uh, and uh, you can trace way back to the dialogue between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Adam when Allah says, you know, bow down uh, to Adam and Allah says uh, he has uh, uh, given knowledge to Adam and that knowledge is, is, is an aman, it has to be used in, in a particular way so, um, uh, but, uh, but shaitan was, was the adversary at that time 
and of course the nafs, the desire of, uh, of man, represented by the desire to, to approach the tree. And this was, in a, in a way, Allah's limiting the function of the, of, of the aqal. So the aqal is given as the most uh, the priceless uh, gift from Allah to be used in the proper way, but there is a limit to the use of the aqal. Uh, but Adam decided to try the limits and had to face the consequences. So you have already in that first drama, uh, this primordial drama, you already have already, in a way, the, uh, the crisis of uh, the human intellect going beyond its um, limits. And so in my paper, I focus on, on the proper use of the intellect by using the, the chronic model of Ulul al-Bab. Uh, and I think I would like you to focus on Ulul al-Bab. I will show you the places. Uh, if you are not sleepy, uh, then I will show you. If you are sleepy, tell me, then I can, we can stop. All right, so I need you to be really honest about it. You can't take it anymore. Then we'll break, and then we come in again. We go out, wash our face, take a bath maybe. <laughs> You know, and then come back again. So I'm going to be very, very free with you because uh, you, you are very special indeed. And uh, we don't want you to suffer this and then having to listen to me. Um, it's a double uh, jeopardy for you. Okay, then it's just uh, a very brief introduction. I am going to go there because uh, that laptop cannot be brought here. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to roll. Uh, my film. It's not uh, Hollywood and certainly not Bollywood. It's Kamal Wood. So <laughs> bear with me. Are you okay with me? Yes. 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 Right? Okay, good. Let me just take something. Yeah, Islamization of human knowledge as the most important mission of our UN. Uh, you have how many pages do you have? 58 pages, including references. Yeah, 59. I have 59 pages, including yeah. references. I have brought some books because I thought that um, you may want to also refer to these books. Uh, many of them are in Arabic, and I'm sure there are many of you who uh, can use the Arabic, some in English because the Arabic references are very important indeed and they have been very useful to me. Um, okay, I'm going to skip many things, all right? So, uh, you have the text with you? Yes. yes. Okay, please, uh, we'll go through the text, all right? So, I'm going to skip all that. I am going to come to responsibilities of the believers. All right? Uh, as I told you, my premise... Okay, let's... One of the infamous detractors is Parvez Hoodboy. Okay. Supposedly a Muslim, but a very secular Muslim. And there are many people like him. Uh, Bassam TV and many others, you know, very critical of Islamization, blah, blah, blah. You know. So now we are not dealing. In my presentation, I'm not dealing with the detractors. That will, I will have a separate chapter on that later on. But, um, uh, but the detractors are saying that, uh, the Muslim detractors are saying, why talk about Islamic science? Why talk about Islamic economics? Why talk about Islamic this, Islamic that? We just need more science. We just need better economics, and better politics, and so on. And, um, 
And that is because the discourse in the 20th century, later 20th century, the discourse of Faruqi, the discourse of Naqib and Triple IT, uh, is in a way seen as a response to uh, the uh, predominance of Western science and the uh, Western civilization. And so Islamization is a response to Western dominance in the 20th century. My premise is different. My premise, it is not a response. Uh, it is, in fact, a divine imperative. So, IOHK is a divine imperative. This is the, you might say, the ideas. Um, and the divine imperative has to do with, with what is the role of man as the servants of Allah. That's number one. Number two, as a khalifa of Allah. And number three, what is the function of the intellect. I think this is the key thing. What Allah wants the intellect to do. Uh, and um, second, once you know what you're supposed to do, then you have to, you're supposed to change the world. Uh, Muslims, uh, and, and of course believers, have to be involved in this change process. From facade to Islam, from corruption to reform. And all the messengers of God came to bring about that change from the corrupt realities uh, to, uh, to a situation which is in conformity with the divine requirements and divine injunctions. Uh, so then the, uh, the believers with Iqra, uh, armed with Iqra, armed with uh, the uh, meaning of Ulul Al-Bab, I'll refer to that, I'll go back to that place, because I'm going to to be, in a way, like an actor, just to make you a bit uh, you know, less boring. Um, you have to look at the world around you, and you, when you look at the world around you, today we see collapsing structures. And we're not talking about the West, we're talking about our own society. Already we have seen the collapsing structures in the Arab world, collapsing structures in our own societies. And, and the corrupt Muslim situation. So our immediate environment is corrupt. And I'm not referring to just uh, financial corruption, it's moral corruption, spiritual corruption, social corruption, uh, which need to be, uh, to be reformed. Okay, so uh, then you have to deal with the realities. and the conventional systems including of course liberal democracy, secular education, science and technology for the purpose of national uh, goals. Of course this has been severely criticized by the postmodernists. You know, modernity itself has been uh, thoroughly analyzed by the postmodernists and there have been very strong criticism from Foucault, Derrida, Lyotard, you name it. And so modernity cannot be defended anymore from even a Western perspective, let alone a Muslim perspective. All right? So the conventional systems must be addressed and we see the, as, as BBC um, reported last night that um, Western um, leaders uh, and, and scholars are saying we have a systemic crisis in our hands. Yeah, these are symptoms. Symptoms. But, but the admission that you have a systemic thing, because so far nobody dared to say it's a systemic crisis. It's just, you know, we just have to regulate more. Bring in more regulation. These people are, need to be regulated. But the disease is now they say it on television, on BBC, is greed. Going back again 
to the disease of the human heart. Or the mind crossing the limits imposed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so, uh, so this is my premise that IOHK is not just a response to Western dominance. It is an implementation of a divine imperative understood by the Ulul Albah, understood by the real believers, Al Mu'minun, Al Haqiqiyun. Uh, the ordinary Muslims are sleeping. Alhamdulillah, let them sleep. Because uh, they are trying to wake up in the Arab world now. And they will continue to sleep. And of course, the, uh, the leaders will give them all kinds of uh, goodies and sweets just to put them to sleep. Okay, so, but our job is to bring about that awareness. And the spirit is not one of confrontation, the spirit of Rahmatanil Alam is how to bring this message of God to mankind, to our own people first of all, as a panacea for our own weaknesses and diseases, and, and hopefully mankind. So we're not here to, to challenge the West, to destroy the West, we're here giving medicine to the sick. And the sick is not just the West, our own people are sick, and I guess we are more sick than them. Yeah. Okay? So that is uh, my premise, now I go back to my paper, okay? Thank you. By the way, uh, if you feel like asking, go ahead. Okay, so that uh, things can be more interactive rather than just one-way traffic, you know, professors among us. So I don't want to really bore you. If you feel you have a pressing question to ask, just raise your hand or just speak up, no problem. Do it the Bangladeshi way. <laughs> <laughs> and not the Malay way. The Malay way is too slow. Okay? Uh, now, so my focus is responsibilities of the believers. Number one. Okay? Um, what is the motto of the believers? I mentioned here. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mamati illa this is the motto of the believers. Indeed, my prayers and my devotions and my life, including your academic life, and my death are all for the sake of Allah's Rabbul Alameen, Lord. This is our motto. Okay? And then, and then remember this, believers, uh, we must remember this. All that Allah has given us, our sight, our hearing, our intellects, all of them are going to be answerable to Allah on the Day of Judgment. How we use our intellect is going to be asked by Allah. We allow our intellect to become muqallideen of the conventional system. We allow our intellect to be used for the sake of financial gain. We allow our intellect to support the corrupt. Or we just allow the intellect to be idle or to just be carbon copies of the Western dominant systems, we are going to be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright? So we have to do a tagheer, we have to be involved in social change, holistic reform, renewal, purification of the soul. Uh, attainment of excellence, good conduct, and amal salihat. Um, these are all divine commandments. Uh, and then, of course, very clear commandment where we all know is this that we have to be uh, an ummah that invites people to that which is good, al khair. And here, al khair, Islamic economics, uh, Islamic finance, Islamic banking, Islamic business, uh, these are all parts of the good things that you are going to call people to. And then, Ya Muruna bin Ma'ruf, going all the good things. And Ya Nkawam bin Munka, going against the bad things, including in, in the, uh, the uh, conventional systems. And, okay, that's number one. Number two, of course, we know that we are supposed to be the best of uh, communities, brought forth for mankind, doing the same thing, Amr Ma'ruf, Nai Munka. And then, we are also supposed to be Ummata Wasata the uh, balanced Ummah, the justly balanced Ummah. 
And do you know what is the meaning of this uh, wasatiyah in the Quran? Now there is a focus of wasatiyah uh, by most people and governments also uh, adopting it is, is to talk about the balance between two extremes between uh, fundamentalist extremism on the one hand and liberal extremism on the other hand At-tawazun between al-tafrit and al-ifrat But the most important the most important meaning of wasatiyah is justice and this is given by the Prophet himself and excellence so we are inviting people to economic justice to social justice uh, this is the work of believers and we are believers aren't we are we believers or not we are believers we are believers so that's part of our job but it's a small group, don't worry. The Quran Allah says in many places the majority of the people don't believe. The majority of the people are uh, hypocrites. The majority of the people uh, are not going to accept you. The majority of so we are not guided by the majority. We're guided by the small group of people, uh, the Ulul Alba. Okay, and now the list of those responsibilities in brief. Responsibility to obey Allah and His Messenger. Responsibility to use all the bounties of Allah with gratitude. The emphasis in the Quran is on gratitude. And do you think that the current culture, civilization uh, is doing... There are many good things. But is it with gratitude to Allah? No. No, no it is. You have to be grateful to the government. Yeah? You have to be grateful to uh, to the institution, you have to be grateful to America, to, to Europe for helping the world and so on. But Allah, you have to be grateful to Allah because the resources are Allah's resources. Right. Gas and petroleum and all that are God given resources. Na'matullah, rizq min Allah, fadlum min Allah. So Islamization of knowledge is to correct the perceptions about, about the natural resources. Any questions, please? Are you, are you sleeping? Go on, go on. Are, you, are you about to collapse? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, not yet collapsing. But if you are collapsing, let me know. Okay. And then maybe after half an hour, we have to stand up and do some, you know, shake up. Yeah, exercise. Okay, exercise. Wow. Inshallah. That's second. Number two is utilize. Okay. Number three, iqra. You have to implement iqra. This This is very profound statement. Our Mufassirun, I checked the tafsir of the classical scholars, they were not having problems of epistemological uh, hegemony of the West. You know? They didn't have that problem. They didn't have the problem of westernization. They didn't have the problem of secularization. They did not have the problem of global atheism, which is now rampant and coming back in a very strong, aggressive way. And therefore, iqra bismillah becomes more and more urgent, imperative, more valuable than before. So we need a, a whole book to be rewritten about the meaning of iqra bismillah We have to do dhikrullah because alladina you mean the believers are those who love Allah most. Alladina um alladina ever ashad hubban those who believe in Allah are the most, uh, they are the people who love Allah most. And that, that includes us, inshallah. But at the same time, we have to do tafakkur of His signs in the universe. And tafakkur here is not contemplation alone, it is the scientific analysis and study, very serious study of um, all the, um, all the, um, scientific um, uh, secrets of, of the universe and jihad fi sabilillah is part of the believers so Allah describes in many places that this is really one of the major work of, of the believers and you have it in many verses of the Quran الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنْفُسِهِمْ أَعْظَمُ دَرَجَةً عِنْدَ اللَّهِ 
wala ikaw ang Christ. Dali kong khairul lakum. Sorry? Dali kong khairul lakum. Yeah, that's another, another, another ayah. Very good. So, so jihad is a bit of course, jihad here, yeah, we are talking about intellectual jihad. We're talking about academic jihad. We're talking about economic jihad. There's the other side of jihad. I'm not calling you to that. Because right. that would be stupidity. Sorry? Why should we concentrate only on academic jihad? No, because you are academicians. If you are soldiers, I will talk about the, the other, the other <laughs> kind of jihad. You're not uh, soldiers, I'm not, a, I'm not a general. But if you are, let's say, from the uh, Bangladeshi army, then I'll talk about uh, using the, the arms. But here we're using uh, intellectual armaments. And that is jihad. And in Malaysia, alhamdulillah, one of the good uh, brothers here, a very, very rich man, Tansi uh, Hashim Ali, has uh, popularized the idea of business jihad. Business jihad. Economic jihad. And so what you are doing is jihad fi sabilillah. Bi amwalihim wa anfusihim. With yourselves and with your wealth. You have intellectual wealth, you have your own self, you have your, uh, your professors. So that is your jihad fi sabilillah. And we have to do that jihad. Okay? Yes, please. Go ahead. Just in fact, uh, you are talking about jihad in the context of the intellectual field. Okay. But in the context of our country, I'm talking about Bangladesh. Surprisingly, 90% of our people are Muslim. But the problem with the term, what we use is jihad. Whenever the people in our country, especially by the government, when we use the term jihad, that means they don't like this one. Whenever we use jihad means this is not permitted in Islam or like this. Uh -huh. They want to mean this one. Mm -hmm. And even if we write something on jihad, they'll say that he is very much fundamentalist. He should be in the jail or something. So we are facing this type of problem. So even if we true. learn something here, yeah. it is very difficult for us to employ mm -hmm. this in the mm -hmm. of our country. So if this is very clear in Quran verse that jihad, this is. What is the definition? Correct. I think it's clear. Yeah. But the problem is we can't use this word even in the present context. No. Okay, well, all right. If you cannot use, you can use some other You can use uh, English words, striving to the best of your ability. For, don't use the word, yeah? Striving to the best of your ability to bring about um, appropriate social change. Don't use the word, yeah? No problem. In Malaysia, we can use Alhamdulillah. So please come to Malaysia. <laughs> You can use the word jihad, no problem. All right. Of course, uh, you go to America, you go to Europe. Now they are calling jihadists. So by that definition, I am a jihadist. That's why I'm not going to America yet. Uh, this is what, there is one word which is called Islamic movement. Okay. Is it the real one, what we can say? Jihad. Islamic movement is the instrument. Okay. Okay. Here I'm talking about the duty. And the instrument can be movement, can be party, can be university, can be groups, can be individuals, can be uh, organizations, uh, NGOs, no problem. Those are instruments to implement jihad. But jihad fi sabilillah, let's understand it, is really very, very important. But here we are really not talking about, about uh, arms. Of course, when it comes to arms, then if you have to, then of course there are, there are ways and uh, rules concerning jihad. And of course, uh, if you read um, Shaykh Yusuf al Qaradawi in several books, he tells you uh, that uh, the, the call for jihad cannot be done by individuals or by, by people alone. It has to be approved by the central authorities and, and so on. So there are rules and regulations concerning the physical uh, military jihad. But here I'm not talking about the military, I'm talking to professors. So your jihad is intellectual jihad. Okay. Your intellectual jihad. Uh, and I think this is more important. Yeah. This is more important than the jihad of the sword. Because the jihad of the sword is a short term. And uh, you find that people who use a sword after uh, getting victory do not know what to do uh, with that. Because they only know how to use a sword. Uh, and, and what is inside here has become sort of blunted. Uh, the other thing is da'wah al-khair al-haq, inviting people to the truth and to uh, 
الحق establishment of حق الدين العدل إقامة الدين إقامة العدل establishing the true religion establishing justice establishing أحسن and then تقوى الله and حب الله loving Allah سبحانه وتعالى of course academics don't talk like this but here we are Islamic academics so we have to use you know the the guidance of the Quran and we take this out there a very important part of our identity we will be saying the love of Allah the love of the Messenger and the love of striving in his path should be above everything else you can see this in Surah Al-Marah then Al-Amru Bil-Ma'ruf we already talked about that number 10 gives you the the principle of working with others, working with the West, working with the East, working with the North, with the South, in all things which are good, which are not contradictory to Islam. And there are many areas of scientific research, technological advancement that we need to learn. And even in management, the best, some of the best management practices are not in the Muslim countries. Uh, they were in America at one time, now in Japan, now uh, Germany. So we can learn from the best practices of those people uh, in, the, in the name of, of Hikmah uh, as the lost property of the believers. So the Prophet uh, has a very you know, famous statement. Al-Hikmah, Dallatul Mu'min. Wisdom is the lost property of the, of the believer. Anna wajadaha fahuwa ahaqqu biha. Wherever he or she finds it, you may find it in Washington, you find it in New York, you find it in Paris, you find it in, uh, of course, uh, India. Uh, in India, uh, yeah, no problem. Then, because this is the, this is the attitude of our uh, ancestors and also the great scholars of the past, when they, you know, um, came into contact with with Hellenistic culture. What did they do? They benefited greatly from Hellenistic culture, uh, the logical the rational part of it, the scientific, the mathematical. But they left aside uh, the myths, the, the religion, and the art, uh, the fine arts of, of the Greeks. But they took the logic. And so that is part of, uh, and logic became a very important instrument in Usul al-Fiqh. The Muslims were not the first to introduce logic. It was the Greeks. Aristotelian logic was adopted by the Muslims. <coughs> and then use is a very important tool for the search for truth uh, which is not of course covered by revelation and number 11 is Professor, very... Professor, you, yes, you, sorry. you explain that there is intellectual property right it's a uh, current issue okay. uh, the hadith as uh, explained by you Hikmah Dalla is that uh, hadith contrary to this intellectual property right? No, we have, the hadith is very general. It does not cover property right. Property right is a very important uh, issue now with uh, intellectual integrity, academic integrity, academic honesty. Uh, property right is very important. Uh, and, uh, but you can take, um, the, the hadith says, Wisdom is the lost property of the believer. Wherever he finds it, he has a right to it. All right? That is a general You can have a right to it. But how do you get that right? must be circumscribed by the law, norms, and regulations of the society. In the time of the Prophet ﷺ, in the time of the, of the Sahaba, in the time of, uh, of uh, the great scholars, of the uh, verses and the Umayyads, there was no uh, intellectual property. IP was not introduced at that time. So they took from, from Aristotle, they took from, from Plato and uh, Neoplatonic uh, thinkers who adopted uh, without really attributing. Uh, Miss Kawe took a lot from, from Aristotle. Uh, even Al Ghazali took from also uh, Greek thought uh, uh, after being absorbed into Islamic um, uh, epistemology. So, but now, Intellectual property, property is a very important issue. So we have to acknowledge. We have to acknowledge. 
we, if you're talking about articles, we have to cite the references in the proper way. And of course, again, it is a Western method that we're using. You either use the APA system or they use the... Um, Sorry? Tripoli? Harvard, Harvard system. Harvard system, Chicago system. It's all Western, but this is good because they are ahead of us in this. You know? So we can How use all that. Pardon me? Sorry? Say? Sporters. Harvard, Chicago, MLA, APL. Yeah, MLL, APL. Yeah, right. Sporters. Okay, so Muslims have not been able to come up. Muslims are adopting that. No problem. Yes. Yeah. The tough one thing is uh, what I see, you are talking about the heat problem, and now we see about the intellectual property. Mm -hmm. In fact, what I have personally learned from the Quran, that actually one is the combining force for his mind. Sorry? That is combining force to learn efforts. To learn Hikmah. Okay. And another one is which is, which is given by directly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And I can refer a specific ayah to this. Wama yutal hikmata fakat kuti akharan Yes, yes, yes. That is, uh, Allah he has given the Hikmah. This is one of the best niyama to the people. Correct, correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, uh, Hikmah has many interpretations. Uh, some scholars who say hikmah means actually the sunnah of the prophet. But in general, it means wisdom, and the philosophers use the word hikmah for philosophy. So, but uh, but the, the, the spirit of the Quran is right conduct. It's not just abstract knowledge. Uh, philosophers like to go into abstract knowledge, and, and they're fascinated by the Greek uh, speculative thinking. And, and so this is where the philosophers got it wrong. And the philosophy then, um, you know, uh, diverted from from the, the concern of the Quran is right action, uh, not just abstract knowledge. 